In this video, I'm going to discuss the topic of cutting through candles, which is a topic that I've been wanting to uh, discuss on this channel for quite a bit of time. All right, guys, you can find all of my referral links in the description box below, including a referral link to Apex Trader Funding, Top Step Trader Funding, and TradingView, the beautiful charts that you see in front of you. Apex Trader Funding is currently running an 80% uh, off sale. So if you want to hop on and, and give, it a, give it a shot, go ahead and use my referral link to Apex Trader Funding. Again, guys, Apex Trader Funding just emailed me tonight and said that they're running uh, one day to pass and 80% off sale. Again, that's one day to pass and 80% off sale. Sign up in the description box below. Okay, guys, um, in this video, we're going to discuss the topic of cutting through candles. Now, what do I mean by cutting through candles? Whenever you are looking at the price chart, the first thing that you're doing is you're assessing the situation and you're looking for places to enter the market. I mean, we are we are trading after all, and we want to find a, a spot that we think that the market is going to turn around. In other words, if we're trying to enter in mostly on limit orders, if not entirely on limit orders, um, we want to look for where the market is more likely than not going to turn around. And one of the things that <clears throat> Michael Huddleston, or Inner Circle Trader, talks about is cutting through candles. So what do I mean by that? If we take our brush tool here, you can see that we're on the electronic trading hours, New York local time, 30 minutes. The very first thing when the market is going up, you're looking, you're looking for shorts. And when the market is going down, you're looking for longs. Um, that's sort of the broad overview, right? Now you might have different time frames that tell you that you mostly want to be short or you, or you mostly want to be long. But for the most part, when you're taking your day trades, you want it to be in the opposite of the direction that the market just came from. So if you're an ICT trader, the first thing that you do is you're going to look for some different levels that you could place. For example, let's say that right now the market is traveling upwards, right? So we have a leg, a new leg that started here on the 30 minute chart. How long this leg is going to go? I don't know exactly, but we can see that we've started a, a temporary new leg higher here in the electronic trading hours. If I'm knowing that and then knowing that I want to place a limit order to go short, what, what are some of the areas that I'm, uh, that are right just on my mind? Well, this leg here that we just had down, I'm looking for levels in that leg, but also the leg here. What does it mean to cut through candles? Cutting through candles means I'm not just looking at the most immediate leg down and the, the leg up that we had prior to that, but I'm also going to cut through and I'm going to look back here and I'm going to look back here and I'm going to look back in prior legs to see if there are any um, fair value gaps or inverse fair value gaps or other patterns that coincide uh, with the more recent leg. In other words, I'm going to cut through candles. So, for example, here we have a rejection block. Okay, that doesn't really work. We have a rejection block in the most, what are some places that you might want to place along? Well, the first one is, there's an idea right there. There's a rejection block at about 4,800. What's the next idea? Well, we have a long wick here, and if we take the 50% of that long wick, we have 4,798 three quarters. But now let's start to cut through candles. We had a fair value gap here, okay? So if I want to cut through candles, as the market comes back up to this fair value gap that we had here, I'm cutting through, uh, I'm cutting through that, I'm cutting through the candles to, to see that. So for example, if I wanted to place a short order, I might place it at 50% betting that the market will do that, for example. Let's cut through some more candles and see some other levels. So here we had a long wick inefficiency. That was a couple of legs prior. And I like that 50% of that a lot. So the 50% of that would be at 48 on one spot seven five. And notice that it's just prior to our most recent leg and it's uh, coinciding with this. What I'm looking at is I'm looking at this long wick inefficiency on this 30 minute candle. 
So in other words, I'm cutting through some of the candles to find levels that other people might not be looking for. What are some other, other things? So let's go back to our brush tool. Here we have a leg. We talked about that long wick inefficiency. We have a rejection block here. That's a long wick inefficiency. Looking at this leg, we have a rejection block, rejection block. That would put us at right about there if you wanted to place a short order. And then as we travel back in time and we're cutting through candles, there's a fair value gap that if the market were to get back up there, that wouldn't be a bad idea. 25% uh, or 50% of this fair value gap here. So in other words, guys, don't be afraid to cut through candles. Don't be afraid to look at, at price levels, especially within these dense trading ranges that are not just in the most recent or the most immediate price leg, but are also in the price legs prior to that. Okay, so let's look at some examples where cutting through candles uh, would give you an idea. So let's look at some different turning points. So we see that we had a turning point here that the market pivoted and turned lower. What are some of the different levels that would have indicated that to you? Well, first off, we have the most immediate leg, which that would have been an order block, and it retraced just above the 50% of this green candle here, which, which in my opinion would be an order block. But let's cut through candles and let's look over here. What do we have? We have a long wick inefficiency or an inverted long wick inefficiency right here. So the 50% of this candle right here. Now, why am I looking at this candle? Because this candle has a long wick below it, meaning that in the past, that 4809 uh, or 40, what's that? I'm sorry. Uh, 4819 evens had been an inefficient price delivery in the past. But let's cut through more candles and let's look at another level that could have indicated to you that the market was going to pivot there right here. What do we see here? An old fair value gap. Right here. Now why am I bringing this up guys? We're always looking for confluence. We're looking for um, multiple patterns that sort of indicate to us the same exact uh, price point. So we can see that the low of this candle was 48.18 spot 75 and the high of this candle was 48.20 spot 75. So had you looked at this fair value gap in the market cutting through candles and again respecting that same level, you would have had an opportunity on a short. All right, let's see more examples of cutting through candles. So we know that the market pivoted here and the close of that candle was there. So taking it to the left, we have a fair value gap. But taking it, cutting through candles, we have a long wick inefficiency here. And notice that we have a long wick inefficiency over here. So we have a very unique candle right here on the 30 minute chart that if you were looking at the chart at this time and you were cutting through candles, you could have noticed this long wick inefficiency that I've highlighted along with this fair value gap and this candle here. The key to day trading futures is visual pattern recognition. Um, you have to become uh, very skilled at recognizing patterns, and you also have to expand your mind beyond what the normal textbooks will teach you. One of the things that I'm trying to emphasize to you and that Michael Huddleston uh, or ICT, Inner Circle Trader, has emphasized is, is especially in these sort of trading range scenarios where the market is going up and down and gyrating up and down and up and down, you need to get used to the concept of cutting through candles. So don't just look at, at the immediate price action. Keep going to the left. See if there are other patterns that agree with what you're thinking. We're looking for confirmation bias. We're looking to have an idea and then have visual patterns agree with our idea. Okay, so... Let's go on the daily chart and see uh, if we have any daily time frame scenarios where we could cut through candles. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to just visually look at where the market pivoted on the daily time frame and see if uh, we could find any ICT patterns that we can recognize. So here we know the market pivoted. 
the market pivoted at this fair value gap, but it also, this was also a fair value gap here. So on the daily chart, could we have guessed that the market would have pivoted somewhere around 55, 45, 58 evens? Well, we have an old fair value gap here, but we also have this fair value gap here as we cut through candles. And in that case, I believe that would be an inverted fair value gap. But in other words, we have two different ICT patterns, the bearish fair value gap as well as the inverted fair value gap um, as we're cutting through candles that indicate that the market was likely to pivot at that point. Similarly, we know that the market pivoted on a daily time frame here. So first thing I notice is a rejection block, but I also notice a long, a long wick inefficiency, so that candle there. But let's, um, right in this area, let's see if we have anything else. As we cut through candles, here we had a long wick inefficiency as well. So we're not afraid to, to go outside the textbook of technical analysis and, and look at multiple legs in the past. Uh, when I say leg, I mean trends, in other words, trends. All right. Let's see a few more examples. We know that the market pivoted here. We have a bearish fair value gap right here, but let's see if we have any other patterns that we could identify right here. There was a little fair value gap here. And as we cut through candles, let's um, notice there was another fair value gap here. And there was a long wick inefficiency and fair value gap here. So we had a lot of different ideas that if the market came back up to around somewhere around 44, 28 halves, 44, 18, within a 10 point range, okay, these things are not always exact, but they can get pretty close. We had a lot of different ICT patterns that would indicate that the market was going to pivot in and around that where it did pivot, okay? So that's what we're looking to do. Let's take a look at this dramatic low here and see what patterns we can find on the left. Here we have a long wick inefficiency. We have a rejection block. We also have, as we, uh, in this one, I'm just going to use a horizontal line. Let's see what the close of the candle. So there we can see that that was the 50% of that long wick inefficiency there would have gotten you in. But in addition to that, we have uh, what could be argued to be an order block. But really, what I'm going to say is, This was just a dense trading range back here. And if we take the high to the low of this trading range, again, we can see that the market pivoted around the 50% point of that trading range. So we're training our, our visual processing. We're training, um, we're training our pattern recognition skills. But in addition to that, let's see if we have any other levels. Look, here we had a balanced price range. We had a bearish fair value gap and a bullish fair value gap that the market respected a long time later. So what, this is what I'm highlighting to you right here. That was a balanced price range in the past. And we also have a long wick inefficiency here and back here. So when the market made its dramatic uh, pivot right where it did, could you have uh, guessed within a, within a decent like five point range where the market was likely to pivot? I'm going to argue that yes. I guess you could have. All right, let's go down to an intraday time frame and talk about uh, cutting candles, cutting through candles. All right, so here we're on a 10 minute chart and let's go down to the regular trading hour so we can just see the market on a regular trading hour basis. So here we have a trading range, right? We have a lot of gyrating up and down. And so oftentimes you're gonna have levels that you, in order to see, you're gonna have to cut through candles. So let's take some of our pivot points um, where we had identifiable patterns. So let's start with this pivot point right here and let's look to the left. Well, number one, we have this interesting candle here, but this is a rejection block right here. And let's continue going to the left. What do we have over here? We have a long wick inefficiency. But as we continue to the left, what do we notice? Another long wick inefficiency right at about the same spot. So let's use our horizontal line tool and see. There we have, uh, there we have it right there. Long wick inefficiency as well as 
almost a fair value gap there, wasn't quite a fair value gap. So I'm going to call that an order block or rejection block as well as a long wick inefficiency that you could see by cutting through candles. Let's take the high of that candle and again you can see what was that was that exactly the 50 percent yeah pretty much exactly the 50 percent the high of that candle was 48.23 three quarters the 50 percent point of this uh long wick inefficiency here was 48.23 half so uh the high of that candle there would have had you would have had you perfect really all right let's take the next pivot point let's take the high first as we cut through candles, because remember, we're not afraid to cut through candles, there was a bearish fair value gap multiple legs prior to that, and we have an inverted fair value gap here. On the immediate price leg, there's really nothing to indicate that the market was going to pivot there. Let's try the close of that candle. We had an inverted, inverted uh, wick, uh, inverted wick here, if we take the close of the candle, and going back, we were still within that old fair value gap and inverted fair value gap. So. Don't be afraid to have multiple patterns in various price legs. Keep going to the left. Keep looking to the left and see if there are multiple patterns that are indicating that the market should turn around uh, in and around the same price area. All right, guys, this is a video that uh, this is a topic that I'm going to cover again and again. You need to train your pattern recognition system to recognize uh, ICT patterns that are not just in the the immediate trend prior, but you're also willing to you're also willing to cut through candles candles as you look to the left. Traditional technical analysis is always going to tell you to just keep looking at the immediate the immediate preceding trend. Modern technical analysis or the technical analysis technical science that Michael Huddleston or Inner Circle Trader has introduced is not merely to look at the immediate preceding trend, but go on and keep looking to the left. See if you have multiple patterns that sort of give you that same price price point. And believe me, guys, according to Michael Huddleston, something what he would say would be that the algorithm or the high-frequency trading algorithms that are controlling the market, that control the market, that dominate the, the market, are not just looking at the immediate preceding trend. They're, they're looking algorithmically in the past as well. Okay, guys, that, uh, that wraps it up. That covers my video on cutting through candles and looking at price, uh, price patterns, uh, patterns in price that you can recognize that are not just in the immediate preceding trend. Okay, guys, final plug. All my referral links are in the description box below. Please make sure to sign up using my referral links. I highly recommend signing up for the American uh, Express Blue Cash Preferred Credit Card using my referral link in the description box below. Get a $75 statement credit using my referral link. 6% uh, cash back on groceries, 3% back on gasoline, and 1% on all of your purchases. Spend at least $3,000 in the first six months. Get a $250 statement credit. Thank you, guys, and use my referral links. Bye-bye.